Welcome back to What RT News with General Disturbance. This is the Lorraine 15551. It's the Tier 8 French SPG. Located on the Eastbourne Ard Airfield, it's under the command of Sly Meerkat. Now, this 155mm howitzer does 750 alpha and it's got a burst radius of 8 meters. And, well, fairly quick reload time as well, which is normally about 28 seconds, but you can take it down as low as 23 if you use premium consumables, but Sly is not. Now, this RT is actually based on the Rain 40-ton tank, and they did build the prototype, and it passed the trials, so it would have entered service with the French army, but for the fact that the Rain 40-ton tank didn't pass trials, and unfortunately that meant that it wasn't accepted and that Support my position. caused the Lorraine 15551 to be rejected as well. A bit sad really because it was quite a good RT. In fact, it's one of the fastest RT. In fact, it is the fastest RT at Tier 8. Which means that you can quickly relocate and that also means that it's very good for playing frontline. Now we can see a number of enemy tanks have made it into the pocket, and that T-54 lightweight... Oh, there's a standard B there. He can't get a shot on them though, because there's rocks that get in the way there. Baseman... Oh, uh, Baseman. <laughs> Slime Meerkat fires around him. I've been doing a lot of Baseman's replays recently. Um, he fires around in there, but I think that he only did a small amount of damage to that uh, standard B. But he's relocated close to the water where there's a Char Future 4 doing some sniping. Yes, that thing really is a, ta a tank destroyer, not a, a medium tank, really. Doesn't have the armor for a medium tank. Oh, that ELC did a matrix move there. He pulled back just as the shell was inbound. And the shell missed him and hit the ground behind him. Sly's having a bit of difficulty trying to find a target that he can shoot at. You can see his reload times come up now. It's 24.89 seconds. Okay, try to get a shot on target. Rounds out the standard B. Hits the rock face. It fell well short and actually hit the rock face rather than the standard B. I mean, he was bang on the standard B, but it wasn't fully dialed in when he shot. He's lined up for that T-57 Heavy, and if he stays there, he is going to get hit. Rounds out. Yep. First direct hit of the game for 244. Looks like the T-57 Heavy is letting the tracks recover, rather than using his repair kit. He's mobile again. Rounds out. Another direct hit. 191 this one time, though. And he goes out of action. Taken out by the M40, M43. Okay, aiming for the rear of that standard B again. He keeps pulling forward to shoot through that gap, whilst the 430U is side-scraping off the corner. Oh, we've got another enemy tank there as well, which we didn't see before. It's an Object 260. Sly is going to try and hit that T-44. Rounds out. Yep, that's a good hit. Solid hit, that one. 395. The T-44's got fairly light armor, so that shell did a lot of damage by shaking him about. Now, this is a first of a double header. You're first seeing this replay with Sly, and then you're going to see one followed up by me afterwards. Yes, one of my replays as well. Okay, he's loaded, and he's just changing his target. He's now going to go for the T-54 Lightweight, and he can just about hit the rear of that vehicle if it goes straight and true. Oh, yes! Yeah, it hit the rear and went straight through the armor on the, the back of that tank. So he's got his first kill. Withdraw from that position. I think he's trying to tell his teammates to pull back. Yeah, it was the AMX 50B he was trying to say pull back because from the position where he was in, he was actually in danger. 
and also the the problem is that the art here are both in danger because there doesn't appear to be anyone covering the south end of the map that enemy char future four might make a move and oh yes he has in fact it looks like he's going after that t49 and he takes him Slice loaded. He's trying to line up a shot. Fires it in now. Rounds out. Splashes in for 166. The SDB might be able to get that guy. If he comes around the corner because he's a one shot. Yeah, no problem. So, 1,300 hit points of damage so far, 633 of stun assist. The object 260 just came down from his uh, place in the pocket to kill the T69, and Slice just got 240 off him. And I hope that that uh, Char Future 4 in Grid Square D9, which is the same one that was sitting near Sly earlier, can get some shots into that 260 as he passes. Yes, that looks like one shot from the... the our future. He's lining up a shot for the gap. Well, it was close. 63 hit points, bit of splash. I think Slice decided now he needs to change position. This is one of those maps actually where relocating can be helpful. Although I have a tendency to stay fairly still during these games and just focus on maximizing firepower just need to be aware just in case the enemy comes up the uh, south end of the map the problem with this position here help. is that those rocks get in the way and you can see you've got a red line if you try to shoot directly um, through them <laughs> trying to get a shot on that standard B he fired snap as he went round that wreck but unfortunately the shell didn't go where he wanted it to Standard B still up there. He's having difficulty trying to select the target. Ah, oh, the standard B is now fully visible. He's letting it dial in. Rounds out. Oh, it goes long again. But the M40, M43 makes certain of it and takes out that guy. But the M40, M43 is now in a lot of trouble because there's an M4 T54E1 nearby. I think Sly spotted that guy. Yeah, the M40 is now retreating as quickly as he can. T95, Doom Turtle. Sly trying to dial in. He fires around but doesn't get anything. So I presume it was the fact that it wasn't fully dialed in. It went long. It looks like it went long. There's a, a impact crater behind the T95. He's asking for help from the uh, his teammate in the AMX 50B. He's looking to get a shot on the T95, the Doom Turtle. Unfortunately, that STB is going to get wiped out. Oh! Slide tries to get a shot in. He hits the T95, but unfortunately, it doesn't do any damage at all. Just makes a clanging noise as it hits the side of the vehicle. The AMX 50B just got taken out by the C54E1, who was threatening both the arty. But that T54E1 gets wiped out, so now it's looking a little bit better for his team. It may be five all at the moment, or five left on each side. But the problem is that... Um, oh, we've got a bit of lag there. The problem is that if this continues... Uh, they are being squeezed into the east side of the map. Oh, the T-95's on fire. And he gets the kill shot that finishes him off. And he quickly gets out before the 430U can see him. But the 430U's in trouble now because he's being double tapped here. The Conway and the Yank Panther 2 got him. So now there's only one main enemy left, the SU-130PM and two Arties. Still getting a bit of lag. Causes the, the, the tank to jump or stutter as it's moving. Yes, this is definitely one of the Arties you want to be in if you're moving about quickly to try and find the enemy because uh, it is uh, very quick. 
60 kilometers an hour forward speed which means you can approach an enemy RT very, very quickly. And the SU-130 PM just got taken out in the north by the M40, M43. That was, must have been a hell of a shot. He stuck behind his position and got taken out. He was hiding behind a rock. And that means now there's only two RTs left on the enemy team. Oh, we got a bit of lag again. And excuse the banging. My neighbor's uh, banging on the... The, the wall. I don't think he's trying to distract me. I think he's trying to do some handiwork. Okay, no RT yet. No six cents gone off. But he's got a 155mm shell for him the moment he finds him. Oh, he's found him! And it's the school bus! <laughs> that shell went right into the side. But now he's got the long reload, and that's a bit of a problem because. Uh, He's got to find that last enemy RT. He might be up in the northwest corner. Oh, he found him! And he's not loaded! And the GW Pat Tiger takes a round right into the side. And that's the end of Sly's game, unfortunately. Taken out by the enemy RT, who is still in the bush, but not for long. Yeah, <laughs> and that wins the game. So rather sad ending for Sly in that he gets taken out but at least it's a victory for the team. Let's have a look at the second replay. And here's the second replay and it's on Erlenberg and as I said before it's me in the Lorraine 155-51. Game started. Well unlike Sly you'll notice I'm using premium consumables because it speeds up the reload and it improves the aim. In fact, all the skills of the crew get better. But uh, yeah, it doesn't stop the water being fairly deep just then. <laughs> I've seen some RT who are a bit slow drown in that water. I don't know why Wargaming made it so sh so deep at that particular point. Anyway. From this little spot, I can actually shoot into the castle grounds and also cover any tanks coming out of the town. As you can see, I can shoot right over to the other side of the castle. Fully dialed in there, just in case the enemy does turn up. Normally, somebody does arrive and receives a warm greeting. But nobody's turned up yet. Okay, we do have some enemies, though, going into the town area. And you can see I can shoot up the main high street and an AT-15 turned up so I'm dialing in on him rounds out that was Klaus and Klaus is in the house 212 hit points from that shot oh that IS-7 just took three shots in a row after that he took a fire and a fire extinguisher went off but he's gone around the corner to try and kill the Cranvan looks like he's face hugging him the cram bars and reload that's going to cause that problems. was close and i get a nice shot on the is4 but it's not very big it's only 55 hit points and unfortunately we lose the cram barn. but uh, the enemy now holds that courtyard area well they did until samur ron jeremy which is a famous porn star gets wiped out by our t124 okay trying to get a shot on that is that was close and this time around i hit the rear of the vehicle and that does a considerable amount of damage to him. 233. All that's up. Uh, the ISM's pulling back. Can I get another shot into that IS-7? It'd be rather nice if I could. I'm loading a premium round. Rounds out. And it zips right over the top of the IS-7, but explodes behind him. And I think the ISM was directly behind the IS-7, so he might have actually been hit by the splash on that one. Okay, the ISM's pulling out of that spot now. Almost loaded. Rounds out. That was close. Nice oh, direct one. hit. 370 wait, 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 wait. hit points. That was close. That IS-7 is in that, deep in that corner. This is going to be a really difficult shot to get this one in. My reload time is just under 24 seconds. So you can see the 
premium consumables does have an effect and oh that one hit the building I think I was just aiming too close to the building and the shell hit it there's an object 705 over there but I can't get a shot on him but in the castle north end we've got a charioteer Let's see if I can get a shot onto him runs out it falls short a long way short unfortunately Oh, TVP's coming in to try and kill our 50 TP. And yes, he assassinates him and then moves over into the other end of the ca castle. Charioteer comes in. Let's see if I can get around into him. That was fucking close! Yes, it was. <laughs> 332 hit points into the rear of the charioteer. Hit his weak armor. But I don't think the TVP can come out of the castle because there's a leopard prototype covering one exit and a Tiger 2 as well. Plus on this side we've got an E75 so if they do try to leave the castle they're going to get intercepted. Okay I'm loaded. But not yet with a target. Okay over on the east bank of the river I've got a 257 and I'm dialing in and just as I start dialing in yes the enemies appear in the castle again looks like they did exit on the west side of the castle and departed north I fire around at the Borsig I think I may have splashed him okay loading premium uh, standard ammo now because I've run out of all the premium shells looking to see if I could put another shell the way of the Borsig oh the IS-7s moved into that uh, room up in the heights and I think I can put a shell through the window that was close yep no, that's wrong. <laughs> he just got nuked that in that was room close. <laughs> he's not going to be uh, very happy about that thought he was nice and safe in there and could shoot at my teammates but no he ended up going back to the garage okay mark the target is the IS-4 this time He's got fairly heavy armor on that, that one. That was close. 66 hit points is all I can get. The shell hit the frontal armor and it fairly well resisted that hit. It hit the front upper plate. You can see there's a little yellow stain there. That's where the shell impacted. Okay, I've got another round ready. I'm firing blind, but I know the IS-4 was there. Okay, the charioteer had to retreat, as did the TVP T5051. And the charioteer is now guarding their cap area at the back, but there's that IS-4 retreating. Looks like our leopard's going over to try and get that IS-4. I think there was an Object 705 in that vicinity as well, so he needs to be careful. There's the IS-4. There's the 705. And the Leopard took a hit from the IS-4. He pulls back, draws the IS-4 in. I fire around that him. Was close. Hits the rear of the IS-4, stuns him. And he goes down to a shot from the Leopard prototype. Unfortunately, the Leopard prototype gets taken up by the 257 across the river. And that means now that the 705's got no reason to remain there. But he's trying to cross the river. That tank destroyer is getting in the way. I think that's the AT-15, isn't it? Ah, he gets killed by the 277 on our team. And that's an AFK up at the enemy cap area. Okay, we're going back to that object 257. He's facing off against our T-124. But we've got a 705 nearby as well. So I'm looking to see if I can put a round onto that guy. He's had a number of heat rounds hit his roof. That's why it's all purple. Rounds out. That was fucking close! Yes, and that one hit the roof as well. So he's now got yellow and purple stains on his roof from all the impact damage. I think the E4's gone a bit deep there. He fires his 155mm, pulls back. Unfortunately, 257 takes the opportunity to that pull was forward. Close. I put a round into him, but I don't think the E4 is going to survive this now because the 257, yeah, 
he's a one shot so the 257 took him out probably with a premium round so there's only five left on the enemy team we've got a bob checked up near the windmill I'm dialing in on that spot almost ready to shoot rounds out now I waited to make sure that it was fully dialed in before I shot don't think I hit the bob check but I probably stunned him I'm not loaded so I can't hit the 257 yet he's facing off against the scorpion G now and the Scorpion G, remember, has got the Bobject behind him. So that I fire around close. him, which hits no, a side on 257. Wait, 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 wait. That was close. He's now one shot, that 257. The Scorpion could just drive in and take him. And it, I think that's what he's going to do. He does take a hit from the 257, but the 257 is now dead. And that means now there's only four left on the enemy team. The TVP, the Charioteer, the CS-53, and the Object 2684. I fire a blind shot towards the windmill, and it hits the windmill exactly. Okay, we're looking for any sign of the enemy. At the moment, they are being very cautious and not showing themselves, but our team are very reluctant to actually go into the enemy camp because if they do try, they're more likely going to get fired on. There's the Bobject. I've just launched a blind shot in there, but uh, where the CS-53 was likely to be. Bobject's taking some damage, so if I can put a shell in there, I might be able to get some stun assist. I've marked the spot where I thought he was. Always helpful to... Give yourself an idea of where the enemy might be located. And he was still there because the shell went in and disappeared without an explosion. So I must have hit the guy square on. Unfortunately, their TVP just killed our TVP. But he's very low on hit points, that guy. I might be able to splash him if I can land a shell somewhere near that corner. Rounds out. No, it wasn't close enough. So back to the Bobject. Oh, that Scorpion G made a big mistake there because now he's very low on hit points and I'm seeing if I can help in any way by firing around that, that him. Was close. That stunned the 2684, which gives the Scorpion a bit of an advantage. Their TVP's just killed our E75, so that guy is getting the scores back. The Scorpion's now having to move as fast as he can to keep away from the pointy end. Rounds out. That was close. And that helps him a lot because it kills the 2684. So I've got two kills now. Just need to find that CS-53. In fact, actually, what I'm going to do is move a bit closer. And I'm knocking trees down, but I don't think the enemy's looking because they've got no arty now. They can't see where these, who's knocking these trees down. I'm going to try and motor in and get closer on the east side of the map. And if I can, that might give me the angle to get at the enemy. Oh, now the Tiger 2 just took out their TVP. And their TVP had four kills, so he was actually a very good player. And I think that gives us an advantage. This good, looks like a good spot. And the chariot has been spotted and slotted. And that just leaves the CS-53. And I'm dialing in on where I think he is using the minimap. Just trying to work out where he might be. There's a tree knocked down there. That might be his cover. He might have used that tree, but he was last seen in that spot. 
but there's a tree down across the railway tracks which could be what he's using to spot the cap and shoot our scorpion's gone up into the corner so he can come in from one direction the 277's going in from the other direction there he is he was still there that, that was, was close. Fucking close and we've got two clauses in the room now <laughs> CS53 finally dies to the 277 and the game is over. So let's have a look at the end of battle stats. And here's the end of battle results. In the first battle, you can see that Slime Meerkat managed to get an Ace Tanker in the Lorraine 155 Mini 51. He also got a Bruiser Medal for getting at least 5 critical hits. He got 13 in total. But no other medals, I'm afraid. Just the ace. If we look at the uh, team score, we can see that he didn't get the highest damage in the game. No, that went to the Conway with 5,497 hit points of damage. So he must have been blasting away from that uh, out that position up on the heights uh, overlooking the enemy heavy area. And, uh, well, Sly managed to get the uh, third highest damage on his team. But it was the uh, fourth highest damage overall because there was an enemy who managed to get more damage. That was the Object 260 with 3,262 hit points plus the STB1 with 2,967. Sly managed to get 2,438 out of that one. But he did get the highest number of kills or rather he shared that spot with the enemy. Uh, the, the enemy? No, with his fellow RT in the M40, M43. He got three kills, so did Sly and... All the rest I've got two, one, or nothing. And when it came to base XP, it was Sly who did the best with 1,205 base experience points. 1,117 went to the Conway. 1,086 went to the M40, M43. And those are the only players who actually managed to get over 1,000 uh, base experience points. If we look at detail, we can see he fired 17 shots, got 7 direct hits and 1 penetration, 12 splash. Damage of 2,438 hit points, of which 2,028 were at more than 300 meters. Obviously, the closer shot was the one at very close range, the school bus that he shot in the rear. In fact, that's the one that he actually penetrated, which I think we can see here. Yes, it was a penetrating shot to the enemy school bus. He also uh, did receive one hit by way of splash damage, and that was the fatal one because it was the GW Tiger P who shot him. He spotted two enemy vehicles, both the RT. Eight enemy vehicles damaged, three killed, and 699 hit points of damage assistance, plus 1,443 hit points of stun assist of 11 stuns. He earned 32,246 credits and got 50,000 credits on the premium account. So after repair and ammunition resupply, took away a profit of 69,261 credits. He received 1,205 XP times 2 for the first victory, took away 3,616 experience points altogether. So, pretty good game for Sly Meerkat. Not the highest damage, but he certainly earned his Ace Tanker. Let's have a look at my replay. Well, my replay was also an Ace Tanker game, as you can see. I also managed to get a Bruise Medal for getting at least 5 critical hits. I only got 10 in mine, but I did get a Confederate Medal for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on my team. And my win eight from that battle was 4,421, which is Super Unicum standard. Let's have a look at the team score. Well, I didn't get the highest damage either. In fact, actually, yes, I was actually um, uh, behind by in fifth place because the high scorer was that TVP T5051. He was quite a successful player. Got a high caliber for 5,178 hit points. And the next high scorer was the Object 277 on our team. Got a steel wall for 4,963. Then the Scorpion got 3818. The T110E4 got 3,301. That puts me in fifth place with 2,974 hit points and that Confederate. When it came to kills, it was that TVP again. He got four kills in that game. Three kills to the Object 277 and E4. And two kills to myself, the Scorpion G and the Object 257 on the enemy team. But when it came to base XP, it was the Scorpion G who did the best in this one. 1,327 to him, and then 1,094 to myself, 1,012 to the 277, and we were the only three to get the over 1,000 base experience points. You can see that I fired 25 rounds in that game, a lot more. Uh, 12 direct hits, no penetrations on this one, and 23 splash. 
Damage of 2,974 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. I damaged nine of the enemy, killed two, and got 1,018 hit points of stun assist off 20 stuns. On a premium count, I earned 44,571 credits, got 11,143 from personal reserves, total of 55,714. And after ammunition resupply, remember I did use premium ammo. In fact, I used all four premium ammo rounds in that game. I actually ended up with only 7,314 credits, but I would have made a loss if I'd had a free to play account. 1,641 XP times two for the first victory, the same again from personal reserves, and took away 4,923 experience points altogether. And I said that was fun because it was just blasting away all the time and plenty of targets to shoot at. Uh, although there were a few moments where I was bereft of anything to see and couldn't get a shot in. Um, that CS-53, the one who was hiding, I did actually hit him with one of the shots. A blind hit for 166 hit points. That was the one who was hiding in the bushes right at the end. And uh, so I finally actually did manage to touch that guy. And of course, as you saw during the game, um, I did actually get a stun on the TVP right at the end. That one that um, near the end where I tried to fire on him as he was on that corner. And yes, I did stun him, but I didn't get close enough to do any damage to him. So I hope you appreciated those two replays. Uh, if you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment down below if you, because uh, it feeds the YouTube algorithm. And thanks for watching.